Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of Dogman Encounters Radio. I'm Vic Cundiff, and I'll be your host for the show. Before we bring on tonight's guest, if you've had a Dogman Encounter and would like to speak with me about it, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. I'd love to hear from you. If you've had a Sasquatch sighting and would like to be a guest on Bigfoot Eyewitness Radio, please go to bigfooteyewitness.com and submit a report. All right, let's bring on tonight's guest. Tonight's guest is Taylor. Taylor, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me tonight. Oh, you know you're welcome. Taylor, please give us a brief bio on yourself. I live in Colorado and been a, a native my whole life. Uh, third generation native of Colorado. I uh, spent most of my life studying wolves, whether it was up in Yellowstone, up in Wyoming, or working at a uh, sanctuary here in uh, Colorado as well. I uh, spent uh, the last five years as a wildland firefighter, both on engine crews, hotshot crews, all that, uh, and uh very uh, avid writer, done a lot of uh, writing of books as well as uh, researching uh, cryptozoology, so anything from Bigfoot to Loch Ness to even werewolves, and uh, just basically anything outdoors, uh, that's kind of what my life has been. So uh, always camping, always hiking, uh, what have you. What's the wildest thing you've seen while being out there in the woods fighting fires, not dogman related, of course, but what's the wildest thing you've seen doing that? Ah, uh, well, it's it's always hard to say because there's always so many, but uh, every time the uh, the fire starts to crown and you get those runs uh, from the wind, you might have had a fire that was a single tree, and within five minutes, you're looking at about 100 acres just ablaze and flame lengths of almost two, 300 feet, and I mean, that's probably the, the wildest thing I've ever seen. I can't imagine what that must be like doing that sort of thing. You deserve a lot of credit for going out and doing that. Well, thank you. You're welcome. You said you've studied wildlife biology for five years. What more can you tell us about the scope of your studies? Well, so I uh, started right out of high school uh, and basically did biological sciences and then uh, started focusing more on wildlife biology and then even more so on that, a focus in wolf biology. Um, just, uh, as a kid, uh, when I was about three years old, my mom and dad took me to a wolf sanctuary up in Washington. And, uh, I can vaguely remember the wolves just were so interested in me and something in that just kind of made me want to study wolves and, uh, learn as much as I could about them. And, uh, with all that goes on with wolves out there in the wild, with hunting all that, I wanted to be able to help them too. So, uh, when I got out of high school and into college, I just started my research and I was working at a, uh, wolf center here in Colorado and I did that for about five years while I was in high school and college uh, and then uh, started going up to Yellowstone uh, every summer and uh, once or twice in the winter and would go up and just kind of help uh, count the wolves and just research them uh, and document them and uh, basically just whatever I could do with wolves whether it was learning or helping I did I've got to tell you, for as young as you are, you sure have already lived an interesting life. I'm impressed. Well, again, thank you very much. Oh, you know, you're welcome. Would you say your knowledge of wolves made it easier for you to deal with your dogman encounters or harder? I would say definitely easier, um, based on, again, with all the, the knowledge and research I have with wolves and, uh, again, with me being interested in cryptozoology and having studied animals such as Bigfoot and werewolves, dogmen, Loch Ness, everything like that, and kind of just kind of watching the shows and reading the books about what people have been seeing and kind of what they were describing and their encounters that they, what they felt. It, for me, it made it kind of like I was waiting for an encounter, waiting for a, a chance to see something. And uh, when it happened, again, with the fact that I've been next to wolves, both while they're unconscious and even when they're wide awake and ready to come up and lick you or whatever. Um, I, I think it definitely helped. Um, made me not, I wasn't as fearful. And I believe that, uh, animals know if you're going to harm them or they know if you're a good person or not. So, and I think that uh, with my encounter that I had, the creature definitely could tell that I wasn't any threat to it. So it wasn't going to be a threat to me. 
Because of your interest in wolves, were Dogmen your favorite cryptid? I'd say so. Uh, just again, because of the whole the wolf factor, um, being the half wolf uh, creature that they are. I'd say Dogmen, uh, Werewolf, uh, Skinwalker, anything along those lines. Well, even for a lot of people who aren't all that interested in wolves, there's something about Dogmen that just kind of draws you in. Maybe it's because of how creepy they are, how terrifying they are. I don't know, but yeah, there is something about them that just is so interesting. So, no, I understand. Since all of your encounters happened in the same general area, Taylor, before you tell us about your encounters, please tell us about the place where they happened. Well, my family owns a uh, small cabin um, up in northwestern Colorado, way out in the, uh, the middle of nowhere. For those people who don't know much about northwestern Colorado, it's probably about the, the last wild frontier-like spot in the state of Colorado. Not much up there uh, in the way of civilization and towns and what have you. So where my encounter happened uh, was up just north of Dinosaur National Monument, outside the monument, up in the wilderness areas up there. Um, the closest town that you have is Hiawatha, uh, which if you can even call that a town, um, it's very small. So you're pretty far out there. Uh, when you go up there, you're definitely looking for wilderness and trees and mountains and buttes and whatever uh, else you want to kind of call out there, but very remote wilderness. Well, it goes without saying, Colorado's a beautiful state. With all that wild country they have out there, I can't even imagine how many dogmen must be there. All right, Taylor, please tell us about your encounters. Give us every last detail that comes to mind. Yeah, for sure. My encounters, uh, the first one happened on December 26th of actually this last year, and it was actually kind of over a period of a couple days uh, that uh, everything happened. Um, so I'll start out with the first one. Um, me and a bunch of firefighting buddies went up to my uh, my family's cabin to get away for the weekend. We had just uh, gotten done with the fire season in October. So um, we usually kind of spend November and December relaxing, kind of, Trying to get ready, uh, to, for the next fire season, cause obviously you, you work from April till October and you get in between off and you're just right back at it. So we wanted to go up and have some fun and we weren't doing any hunting. We weren't doing any drinking, anything like that. Uh, cause none of us drink. So we just wanted to go up and relax, have time in the, the Colorado uh, wild. Uh, and so we got up there on December 26th or 28th. I'm sorry. Uh, and when we got there, I'd kind of known, uh, that everything was going to be very remote. If something happened, uh, we wouldn't be able to really get any help uh, right away. Uh, cell service up there is pretty sketchy, but, um, everything started out pretty good. Uh, we, uh, unloaded the vehicles, packed into the cabin and decided to go for a hike right away. Um, cause again, as firefighters, that's pretty much our job. So even on your off time, you're kind of hiking, even though you don't want to. So we started our hike, and as we're going along, uh, we're up in the wilderness, in the forest, and we we started getting that feeling that you're getting watched, uh, that you're being followed, um, kind of the the whole basically horror movie kind of feeling. Um, there wasn't any sounds out there. There no birds chirping, no no squirrels in the trees making sounds, nothing. Um, and I, I I'm not a hunter, but I've read enough books and I've watched enough movies to know that. When a predator or something kind of big is out in the woods, a lot of animals go quiet, don't want to make noises. So we uh, we kind of just kind of paid it no mind, um, thought it was probably a bear or something, maybe out hunting, and uh, it wouldn't bother us. We didn't bother it. So we kept hiking about a mile mile into the hike afterwards when we got that feeling. We started um, feeling it again, and that's when uh, we looked kind of ahead of ourselves up on a ridge. Uh, and we noticed a, a black shape, and I, 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 we couldn't really make any details out, uh, just that it was a black figure, and we knew it was alive. So we figured it was a bear, uh, and me, being um, kind of interested in Bigfoot and cryptids and everything, I, I was like, oh, maybe it's a Bigfoot, and having watched, again, a lot of uh, cryptid shows, hunting shows, and reading books, uh, a lot of people, when they go search for Bigfoot, they try to find it, but they don't do a lot of stuff once they do think they see something or when they do see something, they, they just kind of leave it alone because they don't know if it's going to attack them or not. So I was like, well, I'm going to see if this thing will attack or what what will happen. So I threw a rock towards it and it didn't move. 
Um, but again, we knew it was alive, so we I started hiking towards it. And as I started climbing up the ridge, uh, my friends were yelling at me that, hey, it's gone. So sure enough, I looked up, and uh, whatever had been there was gone. Uh, so I, I got up to the tree on top of the ridge where it's been kind of like sitting down next to. And I mean, you could tell the ground was definitely stuffled and moved around, but there were no tracks. There was nothing. You couldn't really find any definitive what it was. So we continued our hike, um, and nothing happened for the rest of the day. Uh, and then we went back home that night, and that was kind of the beginning of it. So that was the first encounter. So uh, once we got back to the cabin, uh, it was later that night, around 6.30, 7 o'clock. We started uh, making dinner, and we're relaxing. And again, being uh, in December, wintertime here in Colorado, the sun starts setting pretty early usually around that 7 o'clock time frame, uh, sometimes earlier, sometimes later, but um, usually around that 7 o'clock. So uh, we're sitting there, and we started hearing noises outside, uh, a thud at the door, uh, the back door, uh, to be specific. And we, we didn't pay it any mind. Um, we just thought it was the cabin. Uh, obviously, it's, it's not super old, but it's it's kind of old. And so we were like, oh, it's just the wind blowing the cabin, or, oh, the tree rubbing up against the cabin. But it was probably about an hour later, so 7.30, 8 o'clock, and uh, most of my friends had uh, fallen asleep, um, except for me and one of, one of the other ones. And we heard a thud again, so I paid a little bit more attention to it that time. I was like, okay, there's something out there. Let's go see what it is, and thinking it was maybe a bear or a raccoon getting into the trash or something along the house. So I go out to the, uh, the back door, and uh, that's when I opened it up. And basically, uh, I was looking, trying to see what I could see. Uh, I did see a black figure again. And again, with me being really into cryptozoology and everything like that, I, I mean, I was definitely scared because you always get that feeling of uh, fear in you, even if um, even if you kind of are used to stuff or expecting something or whatever you want to say. But um, definitely, you still have that that little bit of fear in you because you don't know what that is in front of you. So, But there was a black figure uh, out in the tree line, and uh, I, didn't, I couldn't really see too many details in it, um, but I knew that it was something that could walk on two legs bipedal. But then it would go back on all fours. Uh, it would kind of raise itself up again. And the way it moved, it was very wolf-like. And again, with me working with wolves for about five years, studying wolves, I could just instantly pick up on that right away um because again you you just i mean you working with the wolves for five years you you obviously watch that so um i definitely could tell i was doing wolf behavior and so two thoughts went through my mind when i saw that i was like well either it's, it's a wolf that somehow made its way here into colorado which there are no wild wolves in colorado at least that are documented if they are here no one knows about them but as far as the division of wildlife or anything knows there are no wild wolves in colorado so my thought was, is either, hey, it's, it's a wolf, uh, or, hey, I'm seeing a uh, dog man. So I kind of watched it for a while. It just made its way through the tree line uh, as if it was kind of watching me. Uh, again, I couldn't see exactly what it was. It was far enough from the light of the cabin that it was darkened. Um, but you could see the, the outline of, like, the, the tuft of fur. Um, it had pointy ears like a wolf. Uh, and then... Uh, also, again, walking on the four legs, kind of raising itself on two legs, though, then is what also caught my attention. Uh, and when it stood up uh, next to the trees, it was at least seven, seven and a half feet tall, I'd say, uh, when it was on all fours, uh, from nose to tip of tail. If I had to guess, I'd say it was probably almost seven, eight feet long. Um, but the thing that really stood out to me was how tall it stood at the shoulder when it was on all fours. Again, working with wolves, I've stood next to wolves, and one of the largest ones I've ever stood next to, when it came up next to me, its uh, its shoulder was at about my, my hip, just below it. Uh, this thing, again, hard to tell in the dark and the distance, but from what I could see uh, in working with wolves, I that's meaning its shoulder standing on all fours would have came up to almost my shoulder. Um, if not a little lower, so almost double a, uh, a normal wolf. So, I mean, again, kind of on those notes, I was starting thinking, oh, wow, what am, what am I seeing? Um, maybe I'm having an experience here. Um, 
again, I, I, at first I was thinking Bigfoot, but then I was like, well, no, with the wolf behavior that I'm seeing, it's, it's gotta be a wolf or, hey, a, a dog man, wolf man, whatever. Um, but it, it just kept circling through the woods, uh, and I just kept watching it. Didn't make any movement towards the cabin or anything like that. Uh, basically was doing wolf behavior, uh, kind of staying in the shadows and scoping me out to see what I was doing. So, and, uh, it, it probably lasted a good minute or two. Uh, and then it walked off into the woods and, uh, I just, I watched it walk off and heard the, the crackling in the, of the brush and the twigs. And that was the end of that. Uh, and went back inside, and my friend asked me what was taking so long when I got back to him. And I told him, I uh, I said, hey, man, I, I think I saw that creature again. Uh, and we kind of, we just talked about it, and um, after that, just kind of left it, and basically sat on the stairs again and let the night go on. So uh, it was the, uh, the next day, uh, me and my friends were getting ready to go back outside again, and do some more hikes. Most of my friends had uh, actually taken off, uh, left, um, but me and one of my friends uh, stayed behind at the cabin. Um, there were uh, about five of us total for that trip, so um, about three of them took off, and uh, me and the other friend stayed. But uh, we we decided to go for another hike the next day. It was about a 15 mile hike or so, um, same as the one the day before. Um, and we were heading towards this old, uh, homesteader's cabin that's up in the area. Um, you find a lot of those here in Colorado. Um, there's quite a few up there in northern, northwestern Colorado as well. Um, and it, it's, uh, it, it's not like you kind of typically think of when you think of a cabin in the woods that's old from like the 18, 1900s, uh, where it's like it's falling apart. Um, it was still in decent shape, but it definitely was falling apart. So, um, but we had gotten there. And, uh, we started hearing noises, um, as we're kind of sitting there. Cause we, uh, we got there and we kind of sat down and we took a break, kind of caught our breath, wanted to enjoy the, the nature that was surrounding us. And, um, we, there were birds chirping and there were the squirrels in the trees. And, um, we'd seen a couple deer over by this creek that was near the cabin. And so we were just relaxing, uh, enjoying the day. And that's when all of a sudden things started going quiet. Uh, the birds went silent flew away um the deer were still there uh but they you could tell they were on edge and we started hearing um the the crack kind of like the, the soft walking of of feet or paws or whatever you want to say um on the ground and we looked over around the wall because we're kind of laying in this cabin and we kind of looked up over and didn't see anything at first paid it no mind it was about a minute or two later we heard it again so we turned over to look again, and that's when we saw the creature. It was probably about 2.30 or so during the afternoon, so it was a little brighter out, but it was overcast, so um, being winter, it kind of made it a little more, like, seem like it was 4.30. So it was a little darker, but again, still light to where you could see. But again, with it being daylight, you, we could make more details out. And what we saw was some sort of a wolf creature. And that's exactly what I'll describe it as. And again, I, I based it off of what I've read both, uh, for cryptid research as well as my wolf research. Um, we can make out it had a, a, a long bushy tail like a wolf. Its head exactly resembled a wolf, but it, it, when it stood up, it walked like a man, but again, it had the wolf kind of physiology. It was black fur kind of uh, brownish, reddish here and there, but mainly black. It was walking on all fours when we saw it, so that's what made me think wolf right away. But then it would get up on its, uh, its hind legs, and it would walk a couple steps, kind of peer around the trees at the deer, and then it would get back on all fours. So we're watching, seeing what this thing's doing, and then it stopped uh, when it was kind of parallel with the cabin, and it looked over at us, and like within a, a, a second, uh, I would say, um, we ducked down because uh, we didn't know what this thing would do if it saw us. Um, but the one thing that did catch my eye when it looked at us and before I kind of ducked down was the deep yellow eyes. And they just, they it's like they peered right through your body, through your soul, everything like that. 
Um, and the thing about wolves is they have either amber eyes or yellow eyes. Uh, you won't find a wolf that has any other kind of eyes uh, in the wild. They either have to have that amber or yellow. Um, so it kind of made me remember looking at the wolves that I worked with and studied. It just kind of brought me back to that. But again, there was that kind of that fear factor in there um, because here's this seven, seven and a half foot tall wolf creature that was very muscular. Um, it looked like he could easily rip a deer apart right in half. Um, but I, I, you just don't know what it's going to do. But again, just kind of working with wolves, I knew kind of what I didn't have that uh, as, as normal fear as most people would have. So we, we waited probably about a, a minute or two to see what would happen. And then we looked back over and it had continued on its way, um, made its way towards the deer. There were also elk in the area. It looked at the deer and then the elk and it made its way towards the elk. And the thing that definitely makes this such a unique experience for me is the quickness of this creature. Within like two minutes, I would say, uh, this, this thing had gone from being on all fours, sprinted, almost like it had jumped from where it was on all fours, and was right next to an elk, and had pinned it to the the, the forest floor, and was biting into its neck, and um, you heard the elk scream and everything like that. Uh, I, I just I. I mean, honestly, maybe I'm, I don't know if the time is right, but it just, it happened so quick. And I, I, I could not believe it because I've seen wolf hunt. I've seen how wolves take down prey. And this was far, by far twice as fast and twice as, as lethal. And, but it still had everything that a wolf would do. So we finally decided to kind of make our way out of there. So we quietly kind of left. Um, but as we did, we, we watched the creature as it was kind of gorging itself on the carcass. And it turned around and looked at us. And, again, those yellow eyes are what always kind of make me think. And the way it looked at us, kind of, it was as if it was telling us, hey, get away from here. I don't want to hurt you, but I will if you stay here or if you try to come near me. So we definitely got out of there, uh, started hiking back towards the cabin. Uh, made it back that night and, uh, we kind of sat around and just talked about what we'd seen. Um, my friends all are very, I don't want to say skeptical, but, um, they do kind of have a hard time believing in things like this and Bigfoot and, and ghosts and all that, but they're not completely skeptical on it. They, they definitely, if there's proof or if they definitely see it or things can happen to where they are like, oh wow, okay, that happened. I see it. Um, they, they'll believe it. And so most of the ones that had left were wondering what happened that weekend. And the one friend who stayed behind with me, definitely after everything, that, especially that that encounter, uh, definitely was more interested and was more willing to say, okay, there's definitely things out there. Uh, but like I say, that's how uh, that day ended. Uh, and then that night, nothing really happened. Um, we didn't have any, any encounters that night. Uh, and so... Then the the next day, my friend had taken off. We were, it was basically the time to go. We were ready to leave. He uh, he had packed up uh, way before me, uh, said his goodbyes, and headed off. Um, it was probably around eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, uh, and I was packing up the truck, uh, kind of tidying up the cabin, putting everything back where it went. I just got that again that feeling that you're being watched, uh, that you you're something's kind of looking at you. And, um, I packed the truck and then afterwards, after closing the door to the cabin, walked outside and that's when I kind of heard the noises and there was the creature, uh, standing on, on a ridge kind of overlooking the cabin next to some trees. Um, again, I was by myself, my friend had taken off, um, but I, I could tell that it wasn't going to attack me. It didn't move towards me or, or like rushed towards me like it was going to attack me. Um, it was probably about 50 yards away uh, up on that ridge. But basically, it was as if it was kind of like displaying itself, kind of showing its gracefulness. It, it, it was standing on its hind legs when it had shown up. Um, but then it went to all fours. And um, you just kind of got that feeling, oh, wow, this is a magnificent creature. 
it's a wolf basically. Um, it's very majestic. And, and the only way I can describe this creature, um, after seeing it, uh, in all the encounters was when it stood up on its hind legs, it looked very much like one of the, the werewolves from, if you've ever seen the, the movie Dog Soldiers or, um, uh, Dragon Ball Super, the, the wolf men from that show. It looked just like that. But when it was on all fours, it looked like a wolf. I mean, it, like you find a picture of a wolf online, that's what it looked like, only much, much, much larger. Almost like it all, it, it looked like a, like a wolf from the Twilight movies almost. Um, but like just that, that kind of like that big, but majestic looking animal. Um, but like I say, it didn't come towards me. Uh, I just kind of stayed up on that ridge looking at me as I looked at it. And while it did though, I, I got that sense that this animal doesn't want to hurt me because I didn't want to hurt it. And as I said earlier, I think animals can tell whether it's your dog, your cat, um, the lion at the zoo, or, or again, for me working with wolves, uh, for five years, animals can tell what kind of person you are, if you're going to hurt them, if you're going to threaten them, if you're going to be nice to them, or anything like along those lines. And I think that this animal could tell that about me and my friends. Um, I think it could somehow, like, I, I don't think it, it did this, but it, it, it was as if it could, like, read my mind or look at me, look at my past and say, okay, you worked with wolves, or hey, you, you, you're an animal lover, you, you, you take care of animals, and it just, it knew that I wasn't there to hurt it. So, I just continued staring at it. Finally, I spoke to it. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna say something, and I said, hey, I'm not here to hurt you. I respect your territory. It is your territory now. And it walked off into the woods. Um, kind of like walking off into the sunset sort of scenario. And, uh, I got in my truck and drove away, uh, and left it at that. But I've had friends who have gone up there, uh, since then. Um, I actually had some friends this, this last weekend go up there and they never saw the creature, but they did hear howls. They did find footprints, uh, things along those lines. And, a lot of the uh the people who live do live up in that area have had sightings um both before mine and uh even now after they say that they have heard and seen strange things so um I definitely think that it's it's up there still and hopefully uh I'll get to see it again and hopefully it maybe it has a friend up there and there's a couple of them up there but those are my encounters You've given us some ideas about its appearance, but please carefully describe that dog man's appearance for us from top to bottom, Taylor. Uh, for sure. Um, I'll go from bottom to top, from basically its hind legs, um, whether it was standing or on all fours, were wolves. I mean, the uh, anatomy of a wolf or dog, canine, um, the knee being backwards, reverse of ours. Um, it had the, the claws on the feet, paws. Uh, and then its front limbs were, again, just like a canine, uh, kind of straight out. Um, it did have kind of like, uh, I'd say opposable fingers um, with claws. Um, but they were more, again, when it went on all fours, it was almost as if they were paws. But but when it stood up, it was as if it, could, it would be able to grasp and kind of like move one um, finger uh, over the other. It had the long, bushy tail, uh, much like a wolf. Uh, and then, uh, it, it was black fur, again, with kind of brownish and a little bit of red, but pretty much black. Uh, and then as you got up to, uh, its, its head, uh, it, exactly like a wolf. I mean, it was as if it was a wolf, like I say. Um, the pointy ears, the long snout, um, its canine teeth did kind of protrude out of its mouth when its, when its muzzle was shut, um, but not much. And then, uh, a black nose, uh, but then just those, those yellow eyes. Uh, very, very stunning. Um, that's the, that's what caught every, every time I, I looked at it, uh, and I could see the eyes. That's what caught my attention was just those, those, those deep yellow eyes. Um, but again, muscular as well. I mean, looked like a bodybuilder, uh, in a sense. So that's about what I could describe from it. Did its feet look disproportionately large for its body? Uh, they were a little bit, yes. Um, I mean, normally a wolf's paw prints are already kind of big for their body. 
Um, they have very large paws, and uh, especially their uh, their front paws. Uh, they're very much larger than their their back paws, or and so this 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 feature definitely had that. Um, its front uh, limbs uh, were much bigger than its rear, uh, but all four were were definitely a little bit bigger than uh, for its body. Definitely proportionally a little bit different. What would you say about its head size in comparison to its body? I would say uh, far larger, um, almost as if its head was too big for its body. Um, but I mean, it, it held it up right. It, it was just, um, proportionally bigger, but didn't seem like it, uh, they had any trouble. Um, it just was, uh, far larger. But again, just, just a wolf head. I mean, you look at a wolf in the wild or on, if you type in on Google a wolf, you look at a picture of its head. That's exactly what it was. I can only imagine what must have been going through your head when you were seeing this dog, man. Wow, that had to be something else. When you first saw it up on that ridge during your first sighting, how close was it to you? I'd say probably about um, 50, 60 yards um, up the ridge. So it wasn't too far ahead of us. Uh, But, I mean, and being that far away and looking at the tree that it was next to, it, uh, it definitely looks smaller then, but um, I I think it's because it was kind of hunched down, almost like a like a squatting position in a sense, um, just watching us. But um, the other time, you could definitely tell that it was a lot larger creature. Did any of the guys you were with know as much about animals as you did? Uh, one of my friends uh, is also a, a wildlife biologist, or, or did schooling, I should say, for that um, before he started firefighting. Um, but he, uh, he did mostly like general studies for wildlife biology. So he kind of knows about a lot of animals, not just like focused in wolves like I did. Uh, but he definitely could tell the differences of a wolf and a bear and a, and a, a, a man or a whatever. So, um, he, he definitely was kind of along the lines with me, but, um, a lot of my other friends, they know the difference between animals, um, Again, they they just don't have as extensive knowledge as me or my friend since we did studying for it. But I mean, they would be able to tell a, a dog from a, a wolf or a or a bear or anything like that. I was wondering about that because if they knew much at all about animals in that area, it had to be pretty obvious that they weren't looking at a typical coyote or a typical wolf. I wondered about that. Yeah, they uh, definitely know their Colorado animals. Um, like I say, we we don't have any wild wolves here in in the state uh, again that are documented if they are here they're living here without anybody knowing but yeah we we don't have any wolves uh we do have coyote but um they don't get that big uh by any means um and then bears we do have black bear um and they are there are black bear up in that area but again um i've been around bears i've been in, out in the woods my my entire life like i say whether it was working with wolves or firefighting i've i've seen bear um and my friend who uh, does wildlife biology, he he knows about animals and bears just as much as I do. And even, like say, my other friends, they they know the difference between a bear and a wolf and a coyote and a mountain lion and whatever else. I think it's funny that your friends know as much as they do about animals, but were still so reluctant to acknowledge that it wasn't a typical animal you were looking at. Yeah, like I say, um, even though they know about animals, they're a little more hard to convince when it comes to the supernatural, the, the cryptid side of uh, science. Um, they, like I say, they're not completely skeptical, but unless they're shown or they see it or they, they find the evidence that they need, they're, they're not really going to sit there and say, yeah, it's true just because other people saw it or, oh, yeah, it's true because that picture looks real or that howl sounds like, oh, it's not a wolf howl, it's, it's a, it's a dogman howl or, anything like that. Um, they have to see or hear it in person or, or, again, if they find the evidence. Oh, sure. No, I understand. Yeah, it's a lot easier to deny the fact that you're seeing what you're actually seeing than to accept it wholeheartedly. So, no, that makes sense. How sure are you that you were seeing the same dogman every time you had an encounter on that trip? Well, that's just the thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I'd, I'd say almost 100% sure it was the same creature every time, but you just, you never know. Um, it could have been possibly more than one. 
Um, could have been a whole, a whole family or a, a pack, if you want to say that. But, um, I'd say 100% it was probably the same creature, just based on the way it acted each time and uh, the, the, with the, again, my measurements that I, I was getting from looking at it. Um, and it, it had, again, the, the, the two times I saw its eyes, it had the yellow eyes. So, um, and yellow eyes and wolves, like I say, they do have them, but it's pretty statistically low for every single wolf to have yellow eyes or every two and three wolves to have yellow eyes or, uh, what have you. So I'm fairly certain that it was the same creature I saw each time. So, but, but who knows? Um, it could have been, like I say, it could have been different ones. I'd bet it was the same dog, man, but who knows? Do you think your second encounter was a matter of happenstance or premeditated by the dog man? You know, I'd say that the second encounter, um, when it was when I opened the back door, I think that it was it was kinda curious to see who was who was in its territory. Um and it it wanted to kinda get a good look uh at us. Um, cause again, I, I, it was me saying how animals can judge. I, I think that maybe it was trying to see like what kind of people we were. Or maybe it was just interested in kind of seeing how we'd react to it being there. Um, cause again, not a lot of people are up in that area. So I'm sure it doesn't see a lot of people or a lot of people go looking for it. If you have to have dogman encounters the way you did, thank goodness the dogman you ran into was as calm in its demeanor as it was. Did you notice a sloping profile to its back when it was on all fours, or did it have a flat profile? So when it was on all fours, uh, it basically had the exact same kind of profile as a wolf. Um, pretty much that that almost streamlined, flat um, profile. Its uh, shoulders did raise up a little um, as you started heading towards its head and, and its shoulders. They, they did slope a little, but nothing like out of the ordinary from... Again, like a, a wolf um, that like you would see in the wild. Uh, it's it, it was more that streamlined, straight. Um, so it's just kind of a, a slight, gentle uprise. I see. How close would you say the dogman was to the elk it killed before it charged it? Uh, that's tough to say. Um, I'd figure it no more than 20, 30 yards maybe, if even that. I mean, it might have been even closer. Um, but again, with how quick it moved, it, it, it had to be close. Um, cause the way it, the way it moved, uh, from being on all fours to within, again, a, a minute or two of being right on top of the elk, so as if the elk was like dumbfounded and didn't even know what hit it. So the fact it was able to surprise that elk the way it did, that says a lot. I mean, elk are like horses. You ever try to sneak up on a horse? You just can't do it. No, that is a fact. You definitely can't. Yeah, that says a lot, like I said. Knowing wolves as well as you do, did you observe any behaviors during any of those encounters from that dog, man, that conflicted with what you'd expect from a wolf? Uh, well, um, obviously the, the number one thing was the fact that it would raise from two feet to four. Uh, but, I mean, given the fact that I believed it was the creature that I was seeing, I kind of didn't take that into consideration, but uh, besides that, no, it was very, very much wolf-like. I mean, every every time I saw it, it was close, but not close to where it was right in front of me, like I say, um, to where I could touch it, um, which is very wolf-like. Um, wolves are generally shy, kind of elusive animals that they want to see what you're doing. Uh, if you were out in the woods where there's wolves, they, they'd come up but they'd stay right right just far enough away to where they know if you're about to do something, they'd get away. Um, the only time they'd come up is if, again, they kind of felt like they had the chance, like they were in charge, like they could come up to you um, without you being the one who caused the shots. Uh, so, I mean, it definitely had very wolf-like characteristics and traits that, uh, or uh, habits, I should say, that it was doing, just especially the uh, the second encounter um, when I opened the back door and it was out there in the woods, kind of right on the the peripheral of the cabin and the uh, the light. Um, it just walked along that tree line on all fours, would raise up to the two legs, and then back down to the four, and just 
kind of just, like I say, scope me out and figure out what's going on. So, um, very wolf behavior, I would say. Besides it going up onto two legs, I guess to the uninitiated, I could easily see how they could confuse it for a giant wolf. Yeah, uh, they definitely people here in Colorado, when they think they see a, a wolf, um, a lot of times it's either a coyote or we have gotten lucky and some wolves from Yellowstone have made it down here. Um, and But unfortunately, they're always either hit by a vehicle or they're shot by a rancher or hunter who says it was a coyote. But the people who have said they've seen wolves and for those who are out there and have seen this creature or thought that they've seen this creature, I mean, you definitely would wonder if you saw a large wolf or if you were seeing a, a dog man, wolf man. Yeah, some people have seen them and they still didn't know what they were looking at. So, yeah, I'm sure you're right. Considering your knowledge of animals and the fact you saw a dog man at such close range, what do you think they really are, Taylor? You know, I I don't know. Um, I I can't say for sure if it's a hybrid creature that is half man, half dog, or if it's a hybrid animal that maybe it's a wolf and dog or wolf and coyote or whatever that's just kind of maybe genetically different or on, again, maybe somehow on steroids, you know, however you want to say it. But, um, I, I mean, there's a part of me that thinks that they are. They're, they're just a, an animal that just hasn't been discovered. I mean, the world, for people to say the world has been completely mapped and everything has been found is ridiculous. Um, it wasn't until, I, I, I don't know exactly, but a couple of years ago that the largest cave in the world was discovered in Vietnam. Um, new species are discovered every day. Uh, I mean, just in the last, month or two there's been two new frog species discovered down in central america um so there's a part of me being the wildlife biologist that i am uh, the outdoors person i am always exploring always adventuring there's no end to discoveries on this planet and so like i say um there's places out there that are still waiting to be found uh and then i believe there's creatures um and whether it's dogmen bigfoot uh Pogo Pogo, or uh, some of the other uh, cryptids out there. Um, I think that they're out there. I, I, I do. Some are more believable than others. Um, but there are quite a few, especially when you look at the, the reports. If they're consistent reports and consistent descriptions and behaviors and everything, then yeah, I mean, you got to start looking that these features are possibilities. It's the ultimate conceit to think for a second that we know about everything that's out there, so yeah, it goes without saying, I totally agree with everything you just said. We touched on this earlier, but I didn't cover this aspect of what happened. Were you frustrated by the fact your friends were reluctant to acknowledge what you were really dealing with? Not really, Um, because again, knowing my friends and how they have told me before, um, even before this happened, because we we've always talked about Bigfoot and and other cryptids. Um, I, I talk about it all the time, especially at work. Um, I, just, I, I love talking about it. I, I had known that they were, again, not skeptical, but definitely on the fence. Um, so when they when they didn't know, like, weren't able to say right away what it was, um, no, I wasn't too like mad or angry or hey, why can't you just admit what you saw? Um, I knew they needed to kind of think about it and again have those other encounters. So that the first encounter. Again, who knows, they could have been a bear, and they might have been able to say that. But then when that second encounter happened, uh, even the third one, um, it definitely made it a little bit more to where they're like, okay, um, we got to start realizing something might be out here. So It sounds like from the way you describe them, they are somewhat open-minded, but they're just not ready to take that step to fully acknowledging what it was that you were dealing with. Exactly. Uh, that's exactly how I would say. Um, but they definitely are uh, more interested in the cryptid side of things now. Um, they started kind of even going out on their own adventures and trying to find Bigfoot and other things now. Um, and uh, one of them even told me a story about a Bigfoot encounter he had while he was on a fire up in uh, Wyoming. So, um, But they, they definitely have kind of opened their eyes a little more now. So. 
What did he tell you about his experience? Um, he never really saw anything. Uh, he was up doing a, a fire up in the uh, Medicine Bow National Forest, so kind of southern uh, Wyoming area. And there's a mountain range up there that's pretty uh, pretty remote um, for Wyoming. Um, and he was able to say that they were out camping one night uh, when they were spiked out, which is where you you're not in the fire camp with everybody. You're you're usually it's just your crew um, by themselves sometimes. Uh, and they heard some weird sounds. Um, they they heard rustling in the trees, things like that. They never were able to catch any glimpse of anything, not even a shadow or of a figure. But they heard the weird sounds. They heard weird like whooping, kind of the the whole Bigfoot calls. Um, and they they wondered about it. Um, they they kind of dismissed it because they, again, there's coyotes, there's wolves up in Wyoming. So they're like, oh, maybe it's just a wolf, maybe it's just a coyote. But after thinking about it more, he wondered. He kind of was wondering. So he definitely has opened his mind a lot more. So, well, I can see why that would. You never know. Maybe someday soon, he's going to totally come around and be as addicted to the topic as you are. You never know. I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm still going to ask you anyway. After seeing with your own two eyes the dogmen are reality, Taylor, has that added to the allure of the woods for you or detracted from it? Oh, I'd definitely say that I uh, am more attracted to the woods now. Um, and I always have been, like I say. Uh, I uh, th- Again, there's always that fear. Um, I'll go out into the woods at night sometimes. Um, yeah, uh, and I, I still have that fear of like, oh God, what's what's around the next tree? And if it's super dark, you kind of have that 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 fear. That's just, I mean, that primal fear that all humans have. Um, but I'll go out uh, and and explore. Um, I'm always trying to figure out the next place to go to 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 explore and discover. And I'm kind of trying to get back up to that cabin at some point. And uh, hopefully, I'll be able to see uh, the creature I saw. But no, yeah, I definitely. Nothing has deterred me from the woods. I, I, I'm still going out there and hiking and having as much fun as I can, uh, in the woods. Um, cause like I say, it's with everything I've done already outdoors and in the woods, you, you can't keep me from it. So, but again, there is that fear out there. Well, it goes without saying, I love the healthy outlook you have on your experiences and everything else you've shared with us tonight. But having said that, it's about time for us to get out of here. Before we do, do you have any closing comments you'd like to share? Not really. Um, the only thing I'd say is, again, uh, if you think that everything's been discovered, um, you're wrong. I mean, you got to look at the world uh, and just see what is out there and try and get out and explore. Um I know it's hard in this, this modern world of ours today that everyone's got families and jobs and it seems like no one has time anymore. But if you don't get out there and explore, whether it's just to go for a camping trip to enjoy yourself and life or whether it's to go out and search for, for cryptids, Bigfoot or Dogman, whatever, you got to get out there. And cause if you don't, you'll never see it or it'll be gone or, um, I mean, you just won't get to experience life. Um, and just again, um, the other thing I'll say is some people obviously think that some of these animals, if they are, if they are out there, what if they're a danger to humans or what if they try to attack us? And I know there have been cases, whether it's Bigfoot or Dogman or any other uh, cryptids, there have been cases that people have gone missing or people have been attacked. And, um, it's the same with any animal. I mean, there's cases of lions in Africa that are people have been next to them and they're fine. And other ones where people have been attacked by a lion. But you can't judge a creature based on that. And like I say, my encounter, not once did I ever think I was in danger. Um, I kind of figured this animal, could, again, with how animals can judge, at least I think they can. I think it judged me and knew I wasn't a danger to it, so it wasn't going to be a danger to me. So I think they just want to live their lives. Um, they're out there trying to survive just like us. So um, if they're out there and wherever they're at, They're trying to survive. Well, those are all really good points, and that was all very well said. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show tonight, Taylor, and sharing all those experiences with us. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for uh, allowing me to do so, and uh, hopefully more people will share their experiences, and we can uh, learn more 
about what's going on out there and hopefully uh, other people have good stories to, to tell and um, share with you as well. Well, you know you're welcome. Thanks again so much for your time. Have a great night. If you've had a dogman encounter of your own and would like to speak with me, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. I'd love to hear from you.